Hello, welcome back to the Ball Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally talk a lot of bollocks about ball games and tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 ball game mechanisms that we enjoy. We're going to be starting off with the ones that we like the least, and we'll be going down to number one for the ones that we like the best and if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment about this video down below and we'll see you after this board games 4k so number 10 on this list is a mechanism that was popularized by a geezer called Donald X Vaccarino in his 2009 game called Dominion. And we're not sure, we don't think Dominion was the first deck building game to be published, but it is certainly the one that brought deck building to the forefront of people's imaginations. And usually with deck building, what happens is you'll be taking cards from a display Paying for them with the cards that you've already got. And everyone starts with the same type of cards or the same cards, yeah? Playing, paying for these cards with cards you've already got to try and make your deck more powerful and more efficient so you can do more stuff. Other games that have sort of borrowed from Dominion are games like Marvel Legendary, where you'll be taking control of superheroes to fight villains and do all sorts of things. And you also find that deck builders infiltrated other games like, say, Mage Knight, for instance, you know, and uh, the, the Quest for El Dorado. That uses a, a sort of a deck building mechanism. And whilst it's not our favourite mechanism or by any stretch of the imagination, we still do enjoy it in certain games and that's our number 10. So number nine on this list is something that's sort of reviled by a lot of people. They think it's just rubbish, you know, and it's a roll and move slash draw and move. So you could say games like Formula D and Rife and Bright are, are good examples of the way that roll and move has sort of morphed or evolved over the years so okay it's not enough to say roll dice and then just move like you know Candyland or something like that but games like formula d they've got that added sort of choice or the added headache where you've got to stop on a corner so it's not just a case of roll and move it's a roll and move and then think about the consequences of what's going to happen yeah you know, it's even better when it's got when it's draw and move games like Ave caesar you've, you've got three cards in your hand at, at one time but you'll be playing one and then you'll be moving that number of spaces forward but there's choke points on the map that mean sometimes you've got to choose to go on the outside lane and waste those valuable movement points that are in your deck so we do like roll and move I mean, that sounds weird in this day and age it's almost like saying you like monopoly isn't it but that's enough roll and move slash draw and move we, we like it so number eight on this list is dice placement, popularised or best illustrated by games like Castles of Burgundy, Stefan Fell's masterpiece, Trois, where you'll be using dice to take actions on the board, but you can use other people's dice and they can't do nothing about it. And then you've also got a dice placement in, say, Marco Polo, which, which you'll be, you've got the option of stacking dice on top of each other to take other actions. And we love dice placement games because it's a case of you've got that, you've got the conflict between the random die roll and the strategy trying to mitigate that randomness of that die roll and that's, that's a really good contrasting puzzle that you need to deal with when using this mechanism. So number seven on this list is auction games and this these come in loads of loads of different sizes you've got the dexterity auction like going going gone for instance where you'd be throwing all these cubes into these pots to try and win these flags or these these this merchandise you've got the wonderfully implemented auction in cyclades where you'll be bidding on the favor of gods but you'll be able to kick people out and they can't come back to you until they've gone somewhere else right but you've also got auctions in games like medici where you it's just pure auction be using your victory points as currency to move up these tracks to win certain favors on the board right we love auctions there's loads of different things then it's no longer just i bid one i bid two i bid three blah 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 there's all sorts of different auctions and you never know who's going to win them so number six on our list of the top 10 board gaming mechanisms is tile laying and this is probably one of the simplest mechanisms that we we enjoy best illustrated by the 1999 game carcassonne and it's just a case of drawing a tile from a bag sticking it down placing it in the most strategic place possible to complete roads to 
place tiles around monasteries, build cities, get your farmers out into fields. You take the carcass home idea, it was expanded upon in games like Alhambra and Baron Park. And whilst it's simple, most of these games are sort of quick, aren't they? We, we, we still enjoy it to this day. I mean, carcass home is 20 years old and it's still up there in our favourite board game mechanisms. So five on this list isn't so much a mechanism, it's something that appears in board games. So we're not cheating because we're going to say it's a mechanism. And if we think it's a mechanism, then it is a mechanism in it. So it's tracks and recent game we played was Terra Mystica, where you're trying to get your pawns or your, your tokens up a cold track to, to get extra bonuses to get victory points at the end of the game and also power and money to help you out whilst you're playing the game. And this sort of appears in games like Sulkin, the Mayan Calendar, and also in a game we got back there called The Holder Is Older, where it's just the game, the whole game is just move, trying to move up these, these different tracks, knowing which one to, to move up on. One your opponent is going to move beyond where you are on the track. So we do love moving up tracks. We love getting those bonuses. We love the fact that you can, more often than not, it's like a distraction that sort of draws you away from the main aim of the game. And uh, we love it. That's tracks. So number four on this list is a mechanism that tends to elevate what would otherwise be bog standard games up beyond their status. And we're talking about overpowered abilities. The game that best illustrates this is Cosmic Encounter, which would just be sort of a basic take that game if it wasn't for the overpowered alien abilities. These abilities are game breaking deliberately. They throw chaos into the mix and you, because there's so many of them there's 50 in there and they're in the main core box you never know which one you're going to get and you don't know which way the game's going to go so every game is different right and other games like marco polo for instance you get that special game breaking ability the, the character with the with the mega powerful ability and everyone's looking at you going oh, i wish i had your ability but you're looking at them going i wish i had your one and you know, you've got an ability in there which because it's a dice placement game it allows you to choose the number on all of your dice and that's mad so uh yeah overpowered abilities a mechanism that really does elevate bog standard games above their status so number three on this list is a mechanism that was probably popularized by a german geezer called mac Gertz and it's the rondelle and this was used in a load of his games a few years back from Antiki you've got Imperial that uses it you've got Navigador uses it uh, you've got Hamburgen that uses it and I suppose you could say that Concordia uses it as well because you're basically doing rondelle but through card play and it also appears in games like Shipyard for instance and uh, at the recent Teotihuacan where the whole board is basically one big rondelle so the main idea behind say Matt Gertz rondelle is to prevent you from taking the same action too often and too soon right so what you'll be doing you'll be taking your pawn moving it around the rondelle but in order to move further around the rondelle you'll have to pay more dosh right so it's very clever the way that it's a, a limiting mechanism which actions you can take and when and we love the rondelle whichever way it's implemented and that's our number three so number two on this list uh, is a mechanism that if you've been watching our channel regularly over the last well however long it's been going for i don't know you will know that area control is one of our favorite mechanisms of all time and we've done a list of the top 10 area control games which you can go and have a look at if you go back into our top 10 playlist we love the fact that say games like el grande really did sort of move forward with the car play and the area control but games sub subsequent games have taken that simplistic element and have added to it so you've got say like a the area control of blood rage with the card drafting as well and you've got the that was taken to another level when rise and somewhere you've got the combat system and the war reparations yeah we we love area control we can't wait to play the latest iterations of this They're, whilst the core mechanisms kind of stay the same the stuff that's bolted on is always different and always gives you more options so uh, yeah that's our number two so number one on this list is our favorite ball game mechanism of all time the reason why we like this mechanism is because it presents a huge spectrum from simple to complex and it's worker placement the fact that you just that simple action of taking a piece of wood and sticking it on a piece of cardboard and that's it and taking the action leads to some mind-boggling or very very simple choices you know we really enjoy uh, lords of water deep and that's just a case of placing a worker onto the board and taking the action right but then you've got you can go at the other end of the spectrum with games like Kalis or the gallerist where you'll be placing somebody out onto the board and then 
the amount of choices that come from that one action sort of blossom into this sort of big weird flow diagram in your mind. So the reason we like worker placement so much is because you can go very, very simple. We can go very, very complex and we love it. So that's our top 10 ball game mechanisms. Did you agree with our list? If not, why not? What did we miss out? What did you think about this list? Leave a comment in that section down below. And remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to our channel for more board game bollocks. And we'll see you in the next video.